Hello and a very warm welcome to France 24's Euro 2020 show. Let's take a breath. Let's digest what has happened. Switzerland have knocked out world champions France the first time in their history that Switzerland have beaten the French in an official competition. Kylian Mbappe misses the final penalty in the shootout. An incredible game that finished 3-3 after 120 minutes. 14 goals scored in two games at the Euros. Ruben Slagter joins me to analyse everything. Hi there, Ruben. Hello, yeah, what a day, so happy to be here. Fantastic day of football. It is the biggest upset of the tournament, perhaps the biggest upset in European football that we have seen since Iceland beat England five years ago. Switzerland have knocked out France on penalties after an incredible game, finished 3-3 after 120 minutes. In an unpredictable and high-octane match, Switzerland dominated the first half and were rewarded for their domination when Seferovic scored after Switzerland missed a penalty in the second. France sprang into life. Karim Benzema scored twice in as many minutes before Paul Bogba scored one of the goals of the tournament with a magnificent curling effort. Seferovic headed Switzerland to within one before Gravanovic equalised in the 90th minute. The Swiss, Ruben, did not tremble in the penalty shootout and Kylian Mbappe, of all people, missed the decisive spot kick. But Switzerland were the worthy winners. Yeah, they deserve it. You say Kylian Mbappe uh, of all people, but maybe he was the one without scoring a goal in the whole tournament. He had all the pressure on him and, and, and he missed it. But we have to give credit to the Swiss. We Often when you see the Swiss during a tournament, it's like, OK, they're always there. They're decent, but never spectacular tonight. They were spectacular. It was sensational how they played. It was a joy to watch. They were technically sound today and and tonight, and and they scored some uh, some great goals with a fantastic Zuba, I have to say, and Severovic, one of the few real strikers in the tournament who showed uh, how it's done to uh, many many others. So. Another player I'd like to point out, Ruben, is uh, Granit Xhaka, the Arsenal player, who not only was sensational during the game, but also his mentality after the, the 90 minutes were over. You saw him, you know, telling his players to go for it before the penalty shootout. Just incredible performance by him as well. A real captain. And often he is criticised for it be, be, because of his lack of mentality at Arsenal, also in the Swiss team. So it's impressive how he played tonight. And like you say, you saw the Swiss, the determination where the French... There was uh, some kind of incident between Didier Deschamps and, and uh, Kingsley Coman because Coman was injured or not. But you saw that the French were less in it than the Swiss. The Swiss maybe even wanted it more and so they rightly deserve to, uh, to go through. Switzerland through, worthy winners, but we have to talk about France, Ruben. This is a massive uh, disappointment and a lot was made of, and I'd like to, to draw our attention this to the lineups before the game. If we look at the lineup in the first half, we see that uh, Didier Deschamps opted for a 5-3-2, a 3-4-3. A it wasn't very clear with Adrien Rabiot uh, playing on the left and Clément Langlais coming into defence. It didn't work. Switzerland dominated the first 45 minutes. But if we look at the team in the second half, where Kingsley Coman uh, comes in on that left wing in a more classic 4-4-2, France blew away the Swiss in the second half. So, you know, what, what is this defeat down to? Is it the coach? Is it the players? I would say both. First half, it is clear that Deschamps made a mistake. It's, it's, for me, it's, it's really strange that he made all those changes just because he didn't have a left back. Because, OK, Lucas Hernandez and Luca Digne weren't there. So he had to make a choice. I would always have chosen for what he did in the second half. I mean, France has a better play on almost every position compared to the Swiss. So let's go out on attack, play Kingsley Coman and just go for the win. That's what they did. And we also have to say at 3-1, the game was in the bag. It was just because of the French well, lack of, of, of concentration that they lost it. So I would say the first was half... Was there a little yeah, bit of so. arrogance, maybe? Maybe, maybe. At least the first half, we can see that, that, that Deschamps made a clear mistake. But you can also say that as a, as a good trainer, he, he, he managed to, to change his lineup and to admit that he made a mistake. I think that after the 3-1, you should uh, finish the game easily and that they didn't do it. So, yeah, also the players have their part of responsibility. Yeah, true. A, a final question on, on DJ Deschamps. Uh, Ruben, where do you see his career now with, with the French national team, of course? won the World Cup. This, though, will be a huge disappointment. And with Zinedine Zidane available, there's already rumours. The game's barely finished for an hour. Already a talks of Zidane with France. 
in my opinion, it's all up to Deschamps to decide. I think if he wants to stay, the French Federation never will will never sack him. But if he maybe he will say that okay, this is maybe the end of an era. I, he he won what he had to win the World Cup, final of the Euros in 2016. Okay, this time it was a disappointment. It's up to him to decide, I think. And yeah, it's true that if he will decides to leave, then it's, then there is uh, the ideal uh, uh, replacement is already there with uh, with Zidane. Well, as we mentioned, it has been an absolutely crazy day of football. 14 goals overall. And now let's talk about Spain's victory, which sent them through to the quarterfinals for the fourth consecutive edition after defeating Croatia in an unbelievable match. An eight-goal thriller with Croatia coming back out of nowhere at the end of the first half. But after Unai Simon produced a brilliant save at the start of extra time, the Spaniards went on to win the match 5-3. Ruben, incredible resilience by Spain, who impressed me on the mental aspect because a lot of teams would have capitulated after letting a 3-1 lead slip. Yeah, I agree. It was it was really really good how they how they came back after the the uh, in the in the extra time. You mentioned the the save by Unai Simon, which was crucial because that was to be honest the only moment in the game where Spain was where Croatia was really believing that they could win the match. In my opinion, the rest of the match, yeah, we now see looking uh, at, after the, at of the, course the mistake he made in the first half. That, that's that's even more impressive for me. That okay, he made he made a big 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 mistake and then. He can. He managed to 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 come back even stronger. That's that's really good. And their their strike force today was just fantastic. Spain played a really good match. You would say five three. Well, uh, they were only attacking well. They they. I think that even this defensively, it was quite okay. It was only the last ten minutes, like the French, that they collapsed under the pressure of the Croatians. But but what a game again. We were yeah, two fantastic games. We can be really really lucky. The Euros finally. Uh, are off. <laughs> An absolutely brilliant advert for football. But yeah. Spain seems to be going from strength to strength. And uh, let's hear from a very emotional Luis Enrique, the Spanish head coach, after the game. The end is so beautiful. The weird thing is to be given a second chance in a match like this one. Because we made a mistake in the last 10 minutes of the game when we were leading 3-1. I think we should have played in a way that makes us strong instead of defending and playing with long balls, because I didn't choose these players to play this kind of football, even if you can do that once in a while. Luis Enrique uh, talking there, Ruben, a little bit of a veiled criticism as well towards his players, you know, that they didn't really play the Spanish way. Uh, that's one thing. But now you would imagine Spain also massively confident against Swiss in the, in the quarterfinals. Yeah, at the same time, they will also see that the Swiss can produce uh, magic like they did tonight. So that will be a really interesting match. But it's it's sure that the Spanish are getting, in my opinion, are getting better and better. Slovakia match was also against bad opponents. But now against Croatia, they did a, they did a good job. I see them getting even better in the next game. So if they can beat the Swiss, it's only two uh, games until until the Cup. And I, uh, I, I would say that they are one of the, the big favorites right now, yeah. We'll have to take a look at how those uh, quarterfinals have progressed. It certainly has been an incredible day of football. Let's just remind ourselves of the last 16s uh, matches to this point, the results, uh, the fixtures, uh, starting with, of course, uh, today's uh, results that we saw uh, with uh, France being knocked out, Croatia losing to Spain 5-3 there after 120 minutes. And, of course, looking ahead at uh, the games on Tuesday, England face Germany, Sweden, then take on uh, the Ukraine. Uh, Ruben, we've got very little time left, so I'm going to come to you. I think you know what I'm going to ask, your Predict. predictions for tomorrow, uh, including the second massive clash of this last 16 uh, round. I just really hope for penalties at England against, uh, <laughs> against Germany. And I don't care who will win. It would be a lot of fun if England finally can beat the Germans on penalties, but we'll see. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that game as well. I think that both of the, t the teams will now see that it is a massive, massive opportunity to go really far in the tournament. I'm, I'm really looking forward. I really hope that they both also will be inspired by the play we saw today from four really attacking teams. And that will have, again, two fantastic matches tomorrow. I really hope so. And the two teams that have been a little bit disappointing in the attacking uh, part of the pitch. Well, that draws uh, this Euro 2020 show to an end. Ruben, thank you very much uh, for joining me. You'll That's be right. with us on Tuesday off course. Uh, as for our audience, thank you very much. Stay tuned to the channel. Bye-bye.